Joe Biden's presidency is officially over. We now have a complete picture on most of the metrics with which to compare Biden to other presidents before him. Is it way too soon to rank him? Not in the slightest. The consensus on a president's place in history is rarely final, as new insights and changing societal values continue to reshape their legacy over decades. So we might as well get the ball rolling by looking at Biden's measurable statistics and stacking him up against the very best and worst we've ever seen. Speaking of which, who are the consensus best and worst presidents of all time? While there are tons of polls from all manner of institutions, each one taking different criteria into account, the general consensus top presidents across all polls usually show Abraham Lincoln in the highest ranking of each survey, and George Washington, Franklin D. Roosevelt, Theodore Roosevelt, and Thomas Jefferson rounding out the top five. While James Buchanan, Andrew Johnson, and Franklin Pierce have been very consistently ranked at the bottom of every survey and poll. Will Joe Biden wind up in one of these groups? Let's look at the data and you can decide. And by the way, official results of the 2024 Presidential Greatness Project Expert Survey place Biden 14th all time. And talk about a way too early ranking. This was done in February 2024, with nearly 11 months to go in his presidency. And while I'm looking forward to this year's survey, which should release February 17th, we've got a small sampling from all of you. As of right now, 6,600 YouTubers have ranked Biden in my poll with the results. Um, looking a lot different for Biden. So is it 14th or bottom of the barrel or somewhere in between? Let's examine actual metrics to help us better place him. We're going to start the whole thing off with approval ratings. While not a perfect metric, it definitely provides a good initial summary of a president and how they're performing in their job. Throughout his presidency, Biden actually averaged a 42.2% approval rating, ending with a final mark of 40%. This is the second lowest in Gallup's records. The lowest recorded average approval rating? Donald Trump at 41%. Now, the practice of collecting approval ratings for U.S. presidents began in 1937 with FDR. This, of course, means not every president in history has a comparable approval rating. And not just this rating, but most statistics covered in this video. So keep that in mind moving forward. To give you an idea of the highest average approval ratings among presidents, here's the best of the best. At number one, FDR managed an 84% average approval rating over a 12-year span. JFK is 70% average for almost three years, and Dwight Eisenhower with 65% over four years. And by the way, if you're flaunting Trump having the worst average approval rating as the reason he's the worst president of all time, then that would mean you have to put Biden right down at the bottom of the barrel too, right? So not the best start for Biden, but there's plenty of other metrics to consider. Another important one to many Americans is the issue of national debt. While some presidents have actually managed to reverse the national debt, the majority of them end up increasing it by significant amounts. Joe Biden has added $8.4 trillion to our national debt where it now sits at an astronomical 36 trillion. This puts him in second worst all time in dollar amount with Barack Obama taking top honors at 9.3 trillion and Trump rounding out the three spot with 7.3 trillion. The presidents who reduced the debt the most were Calvin Coolidge at minus 5.4 billion debt, followed by Andrew Jackson at minus 58 million debt. Of course, Modern presidents are going to spend more than presidents of the past, so another thing we can do is look at what was the percentage of increase in national debt during a president's term. Like, how much was $8.4 trillion in debt compared to what we started with. When Joe Biden started, the national debt was $27.8 trillion. And when he finished, the U.S. stood at 36, which is a 30.2% increase. With this ratio, he is more middle of the pack, as the worst of the worst include our wartime presidents. Lincoln had a 4,000% increase during the Civil War, FDR with a 1,100% increase during World War II, and Woodrow Wilson's 800% increase in World War I. And the best ratios being minus 100%, as Andrew Jackson was actually able to completely reduce the national debt to zero during his presidency. Okay, well, Biden racked up a lot of debt, and that is going to lead into our next category, inflation rates. We all know these numbers can't be great. We just live through them. So what did the actual four-year average of inflation end up being? 
6.33%. That puts him third worst all time. If you had $100,000 in a separate account at the beginning of his presidency and just let it sit there for four years, the purchase power of that money after Biden left office would be $79,231. Now, there were two other presidents worse than Biden the late Jimmy Carter at 9.9% .9 inflation rate, and Gerald Ford's 8% year-over-year average. Yikes. The presidents with the best average inflation rates were JFK, Eisenhower, and Obama, all with sub-2% inflation rates. But there's hope for Biden yet in this next category, the average GDP growth of our nation during a presidential term. Boosted by the huge post-COVID growth in 2021, Biden is sporting a remarkable 3.33% average GDP growth, although the last three years have been exactly average growth. This puts Biden in good company at six best all time behind FDR's incredible 10.1% growth, Lyndon B. Johnson's 5.3%, and JFK's 4.4%. And by the way, the absolute bottom of the spectrum is Herbert Hoover, who watched the nation's GDP plummet 9.3% year after year, leading us into the Great Depression. Okay, let's get into the nuts and bolts of a presidency, things the president has a direct hand in doing, like executive orders, pardons, and commutations. So here's the numbers on Biden. He has issued 65 total pardons, and while it isn't clear from history exact numbers from all presidents, we know for certain that this puts him at least six lowest of all the presidents, and for sure the lowest in pardons issued for presidents in the last 125 years. That's great, right? Because issuing pardons can sometimes skirt dangerously close to breaking the rule of law in this nation. The problem with Biden is not how many pardons he handed out, but to who. Biden has been all over the news in the last few weeks in office for pardoning his two brothers, James and Francis, his sister Valerie, and his brother and sister-in-law, Sarah and John. And the most egregious being the full pardon of his son, Hunter Biden, for those offenses against the United States which he has committed or may have committed or taken part in during the period from January 1st, 2014 through December 1st, 2024, which is to say he pardoned his son of crimes he has yet to be accused of. If you're interested in a constitutional breakdown of this pardon, please check out my video here. I'll link it in the description below as well. Biden also pardoned political allies under the same concept, preemptively excusing people for crimes that they have not yet been accused of, including Anthony Fauci, General Mark A. Milley, and the members of Congress who served on the select committee to investigate the January 6th attack, as well as all the police officers who testified before that committee. Oh, and while Biden has the lowest amount of pardons issued by any president, he also holds the most commutations of any president at 4,161. Okay, what the heck is a commutation? Commutations are like pardons, with the essential difference being a pardon removes guilt for a crime, while a commutation reduces the sentence without removing guilt. 4,161 total commutations in four years. More than the next three highest commutation presidents combined. For added reference, Bush, Bush Sr., Reagan, Ford, Carter, Eisenhower, and Nixon combined for 185 total commutations. All together. 185 commutations? Biden was handing that out every two months in office. Some people feel very strongly about the Biden pardons, and others feel, as president, he has every constitutional right to do what he did. You've got to square that up in your mind and make your own judgment, but we're going to keep moving on. Executive orders are also in the news recently as Trump took office and began issuing his, many with new and different directions from Biden's administration. But how many of these did Biden issue in office while running the nation? 162 total executive orders, placing him 23rd, exactly in the middle. And because I'm sure you want to know, Trump's first term in office produced 220 executive orders, with top honors going to Franklin Delano Roosevelt with 3,721. And yes, there were presidents that didn't sign any. James A. Garfield and Zachary Taylor both died before they could pass one. The numbers don't actually make a case for Biden being a great president. It's hard to justify putting him 14th with these metrics. In fact, they actually point the opposite direction. There's always the eye test though, right? Like, how well did the president represent our nation among the leaders of the world? 
Well, if there was a metric to weigh this and then compare versus every other president in history, Biden might be the absolute worst. Even just walking across a stage proved challenging for Biden. But you add in additional obstacles like stairs, and it just became hard to watch the leader of the free world stumbling over himself. The public bike ride was a bad idea. But if I had camera crews on me at all hours of the day, I'm sure they'd catch me tripping in my flip-flops a bunch too. It happens to everyone. But for Biden, this is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of failing the eye test. The awkward cue cards he was given during public events and press conferences. These were head-scratching at best and alarmingly concerning at worst. With simple instructions such as, you enter the Roosevelt Room and say hello to participants, and you take your seat. I understand presidents are busy and have a lot of things happening at once, and a little cue card with a schedule can be helpful, especially for the things that they want to share and don't want to forget about during their whirlwind days. But I don't think anyone can be so overwhelmed by the things going on in their lives as to need a card to reference entering a room while greeting people and then sitting down in a chair. And when Biden wasn't following the cue cards and playing off the cuff, he would always be surrounded by handlers, issuing him away from live conversations. And when he was with other world leaders, it just didn't look right more often than not. The weird air handshakes, the turning in strange directions, the wanderings, and in larger meetings, he couldn't keep his eyes open. I don't know. It might be that these meetings are just incredibly boring, and each and every one of us watching the video now would be powerless to fight off sleep in that instance as well. But it seemed to happen on multiple occasions. Not a great look for the president of the USA. And lastly, there was the speech issues. The unintelligible words. The strange, lost looks mid-sentence that told everyone, I'm lost, and not sure how to continue. The newly invented numbers. Biden sounded pretty bad at the start of his presidency, and things just got worse for him as time went on, ultimately culminating in his disastrous debate performance against Trump that was the catalyst for his entire party turning on him and demanding he drop out of the election. No, I believe the eye test alone is probably why many voters on my poll, as well as many Americans as a whole, feel that Biden wasn't a great president. The numbers we looked at just further back up the eye test. I have to do with, uh, look, if we finally beat Medicare. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks so much for sticking to the end of my video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. We'll make more videos soon.